not a con. Um, I'm Steph the Geek, better known as Steph the Geek than Stephanie Packerel, but um, the title's a little bit of a joke and I can't take complete credit for it, but um, as much as I kind of have been, you know, getting away from the whole cam girl and everything that this started with, um, I can't forget that that's sort of a, still a big part of, a part of what, you know, what my site is about, what I'm about, and how things started. So, you know, you got all this nice academic sounding sort of thing down there, but you know, a lot of it's about the boobs, so stick with that. Um, this is where my site looked about four years ago. Actually in November, apparently, four years ago. And this is basically what I started. And to give you just a little bit of history, um, I happen to have a free webcam kicking around, and I've been doing web work forever, and it felt like forever. And um, I thought, hey, you know, this whole webcam thing, I'm starting to see people doing this on the internet, and this would probably be a really good way to get more traffic to my website. So I hooked that webcam up and, and found out that it worked. And, uh, you know, and, and I had been working on sites for other people for so long, and it was kind of a nice change to be working on something for myself. So finally, this was my chance to express myself, you know, write about whatever I wanted to, put my personal views online, you know, and see what went with it. And four years later, that's pretty much what my site looks like now. A little bit uh, compressed here, we got going on. But, um, and in the you know, four, four and a half years that I've been running it, um, it's really taken on a life of its own. And uh, it's funny because I was talking to Drew, Drew last night, and I can completely relate with a lot of the stuff he's saying. I mean, obviously, he's on a much bigger scale, but um, you know, it's amazing just to have something that you love and, and you do for, because it's fun and because it's interesting. Um, take on a life of its own and you know had the community take on a life of its own so I'm not going to talk too long today because I like questions and questions are good and I even have little pins for questions so because I'm dorky like that but um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the community some of the interesting things I'm I'm doing with technology um, and what you can do with a personal site and building a community around um, around a personal site so history I started the site um, just before I started university Cam Pearl has talked about that a little bit. Um, 2003, I did something that I thought I would never do, which was actually have people pay to join my site. And now to go, actually to go back, the, the pay part, see this little tiny link up there? That's the pay part, it's not, it's not the whole thing. And um, that gave me, that opened a lot of doors because it allowed me to do a lot more with media and it was more than, this is, this is an expense and a hobby. It became more of a, you don't have to call it a business, but it became more of a, a something that I could actually afford to do interesting things with technology and I could afford to get a better digital camera and I could afford the hosting that this was starting, to, you know, was starting to cost. Um, and in 2004, I did hit my number still around the same, about 40,000 unique visitors a month, which is a, a pretty cool number. I've got a few thousand people registered on the site. So sort of started to reach that kind of critical mass. So some of the technical stuff um, that I've got going on, that actually is PHP Nuke. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. Um, it doesn't look like PHP Nuke, but um, that's a good thing in my opinion. And um, I moved to that because, um, because it made things a lot easier for me to update the content. And there was this sort of this plug and play mentality going on um, that if I wanted something, if I wanted a, you know, um, try to think of some examples, um, you know, a better form, if I wanted a, uh, you know, certain feature that was available, chances are somebody out there had already written a PHP nuke module for it and all I would have to do was, you know, hack it up a little bit to fit in with, with what we've already got. So, um, you know, not necessarily a common thing on a personal website, seeing a content management system, but I mean, they're getting a lot more popular now. Another one that I've, I've worked with a bit is Mamba, which I absolutely love, but. Um, so that is PHP Nuke, and um, it really, I'll get into more about um, talking about the overall integration in the community later, but um, it really opened the doors for that integration. Um, RSS is my new baby. I love RSS. I love what it's doing for, um, I call it, I call it, uh, like, I think of it like a Venn diagram with content on my site and on other people's sites. So, uh, you know, reaching out to other sites but then syndicating the same content back onto my own site. And the same thing with that homepage, you saw all those little blobs like that. What those are, are, um, 
little uh, content areas uh, syndicated to so the forums. You saw the last three posts there, and that's syndicated to that. Do you have a question? Sorry? Yes. Yeah. With uh, using PHP Nuke, I was under the impression they stopped development on that, or when the fucking years went on that, I don't know if you would maybe still As far as I know, it's still going on. You know, I'm not, I'm not big in the PHP Nuke community. It's still, there's still updates being released. I, that, I'm running 6.9, and I think they're up to, you know, 7.6 or something like that. So there's been quite a bit that's come out since then. Um, it's a project that's changed hands many times. Um, there's people, you know, there's been communities that have come up and taken PHP Nuke and, and, you know, secured it up a little bit more and added stuff and released it as their own version of PHP Nuke. So it's still going. It's still going strong. In hindsight, you know, we were developing um, the existing site, I guess, about two, two years ago now. Um, you know, I might have wished that I had taken a little bit more of a look into other, into other systems, but it served my needs at the time. I just, I mean, I've sort of locked my chance out of upgrading it, basically, with all the stuff that we've done to it. So, um, anyway, yeah, uh, so RSS has been, has been a big one, and that's going to be, you know, continuing to expand in the future. Non-standard layout. Now, I don't know if, you know, I'm, I'm speaking a lot from coming from sort of the webcam personal site world. I don't know if many of you have checked out some of the sites, but I, I swear, is there some kind of book that they all just get the same layouts from? It's like the column, and you get the blog, and you get the links that are, that are both just, you know, justified on both sides, and it's like the same layout, and I got so sick of seeing that. And my, uh, that, that homepage was actually inspired by a desktop wallpaper contest I had. I did this little, you know, sort of a month-long contest, create the best Steph the Geek desktop wallpaper. And I was getting the, the most cheesy Photoshops ever. Like somebody would apply a filter or something and, you know, here's your desktop wallpaper. And uh, but then I got this one that was that, that, that sort of that stylized cartoon, but it was like a full body and, and it... And I was just, you know, blown away. I couldn't believe that this guy had spent so much time on it. And I loved it so much. And I said, I said, you know, can I use this in my site? And I, I said, you know, my, can you make my chin look not so it's a pointy and a few things like that that didn't quite look like me. You know, so I got into tweak it a little bit. And I ended up using that for, um, you know, and that and the flowing lines and all that was the, um, was the foundation for the site. And I've had a lot, I get a lot of mixed feedback um, on the design of the site. And it was interesting, back in uh, October, I was on, uh, CSS Vault, which is a sort of a critiquing web design critique site, and there was it was people on both sides, and they're having like this war with each other. Like people were like, "It's horrible, I hate it," and people, "I love it, it's different." But um, most people have the same comment, and that it's it's busy, and there's a lot of information, and people get there and they don't know where to go. And you know what? In a way, that's okay because it's it's a personal site, and um, I like people to get lost in it. One one person made this comment that was just fantastic, and the, he was using it as a criticism. And he said, "You know, I went to the site when it was first posted, and then I went back to it again today, and I found something that I hadn't seen the site before. It's horrible. Like, what? That, that's great. That's awesome. You know, you come back and you find something that you hadn't seen the first time. So, you know, and I posted something to the effect. So the layout itself." Um, for me, it was really made out of my own sort of selfish needs because I found that I was going to my site, you know, multiple times a day and, and I was going to the same places. I was checking the forums, I was checking for new blog comments, I was checking like the same, you know, half a dozen things every time I went just to see if there was something new. I think wouldn't it be great if you could just see what was new all at once on the homepage? So that's where that came from. Um, mobile webcam. This is something that I'm pretty proud of because I'm pretty much the first one to be doing this. I know a couple, oh great. <laughs> to turn that one off before. Um, I'm pretty much the first one to be doing this. I know some people have tinkered with it before, but um, I was using buzznet.com to do, uh, uh, to do have like a mo blog for my phone when I got a camera phone and this was cool. And I noticed that they had, again, RSS feeds. And I thought, well, if they're making that available, what if we run a script that checks for a new image? We could save that image as my webcam file. As the, same, as the same JPEG image. Not only that, but we can read the subject line from it and we can overlay that at a particular coordinate in, on the webcam image and put that as a caption. So you've got your standard webcam with you've got your time and date and then you've got the caption. So now for the last, I guess I've been doing this almost a year now or maybe about eight months um, and I've got my, I, I do it you know, for my pocket PC now. It's really for anything with a um, Anything that, you know, any mobile device that you can uh, take a picture and then email with it. Um, I can update my cam, you know, instantly from anywhere, which is really cool. And it's something I've been doing, you know, throughout the conference here. Obviously, there's, there's wireless here, so, you know, I've been on the laptop too. But, um, you know, it's great. It's great anywhere I am. I once read a, uh, an article about how they were using, 
how people were using cell phones and camera phones and all that in Japan. And uh, this guy was saying that, you know, if you're stuck in traffic, um, you don't, and you're going to a meeting, you don't send a text message. I don't know how true this is about Japan, but it was certainly inspiring. Um, so you don't send a text message saying, you know, in traffic, going to be late, you know, to see you soon. You take a picture of yourself looking sad with all the traffic around you. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. You know, that's an interesting way to do it. And again, um, you know, coming back, what, what all this is about for me is, is sharing my life online and putting as much of my life online as possible. So um, to be able to do that from anywhere, not being tied to either my laptop or, um, or some other devices is really cool. And I, you know, I, all it does is it emails that picture as an attachment to a dedicated email address. And then um, using a sort of a hacked up script of uh, easymoblog, easymoblog.org, I think they are. Um, that, that pulls it from that and then repost it to my cam image. So it's a pretty, pretty cool thing. Wireless network camera, nothing really interesting unto itself, but it's something that I, you know, I got recently because um, I now have a 24-7 a, a cam running, um, running in my house, and um, that's done using a network camera, and that's something I'd like to expand more, more later on, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a second here. Future. So... The thing for me is, you know, I'm not really content just to, to sort of create a site and, and create this project and then it's finished and it's done and I'm, I'm done and I'm happy. I'm always trying to, you know, improve on this and um, one thing that I've always wanted to do is, um, you know, have more of the sort of the reality, whatever you want to call it, not reality TV, but, you know, um, voyeuristic kind of, kind of thing and, you know, unedited life and all that. But I don't like the way the other sites do it. I mean, usually when you see people who run their own little independent sites, they've got, you know, they've got a, a, a kitchen cam and they've got an office cam and they've got all that. So you've got like a page with eight cam windows on it. I'm like, that's just not efficient enough for me. What I want is one cam that knows where I am. And so I started looking at this. There was a, I think it was out of MIT. They were developing something called Cricket, which was an indoor location system using, I think it was using Wi-Fi. And, you know, and then I started looking into a couple other solutions, but everything was very proprietary. I'm not much of a hardware hacker. Like, I, you know, I'm the kind of, I'm the person who puts technology together in interesting ways. I don't, you know, I've done some, some programming and, you know, some hardware. I know my way around these things, but I'm not, you know, I don't proclaim to be very good at any of those things. So I sure as hell wasn't going to be, like, soldering things together and, and figuring this out. So, um, but then, you know, RFID started coming out, and this is something that I'd really like to experiment with, and, and you know, prices are coming down and all that. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard of, you know, the guy who just implanted the, the RFID in his hand and all that, and I don't know if, well, that wouldn't really work because it's got too short of a range anyway, but, um, you know, they, they make RFID uh, tags, like, like a, you know, like a key card or, or a little key chains, things like that. What I would like to do is set up readers in various places around the house so it can actually detect what I'm closest to, and then have various cameras, you know, fire for all of that. And see, this is this is where this gets into a different realm for me. I mean, this isn't about this isn't about being a cam girl. This is about tinkering with all this cool shit, like that actually has some kind of purpose. Um, and that's what it's about for me, because it's so much it's so much fun to do this. And I don't know what I don't know what other purpose I would do this for. You know, it's it's great to tinker, but it's even better to have a purpose for it. So, um, so again, you know, with the RFID and with the auto switching cams, that's something I'd really like to. Um, sort of my next plans. GPS tracker, now I've, I've sort of tried, talked myself out of this and so have other people, but um, there was an, an, a conference that I desperately wanted to go to but couldn't um, that was run as part of ACM Multimedia in, in New York City um, called uh, the Continuous Archival and Retrieval of Personal Experiences. That's what it was. And I, they had the most amazing papers on this. And one of them was a continuous audio recording system that um, you know you would wear you would wear a microphone and you would be 24 hours a day seven days a week you would be recording everything that was going on in your life so this would be you know if you needed to remember the conversation that you had with so and so x days ago or if you wanted to you know do a, a sort of a backtrack of that you could do that but the problem is not so much with the technology of recording because we all know it's it's very easy to just record audio constantly it's what do you do with all that information and what they were doing is both um, analyzing the audio and analyzing the ambient noise of the audio and being able to define areas uh, you know based on that ambient noise so you could do you could you know once be on the subway let's say and you know tell it that that was the subway and then from then on it would know when that background noise was the same you were on the subway so you could have you know it could categorize 
<clears throat> all your audio recordings by location. And you could also, again, tie that into a GPS tracker that would constantly know where you are. So anytime you've got, you've got your situation, you've got your coordinates. And another thing, I think this was supposed to be their you know, phase two or whatever. They hadn't actually done this. But they wanted to hook it up to some kind of brainwave scan. So you could actually tell your emotion at the time of saying it. So you could go back and look up at the times that you were on the subway and you were angry and maybe, I don't know, some bum pissed you off or something like that. So you could remember that actual, you know, look up that actual occasion. But I started thinking that, that you know, a GPS tracker constantly showing exactly my location might not be the safest idea. So I don't know, I might revisit that one and make it a little more general, but that's always been something I'm interested in. Video blogging, again, is sort of the next uh, logical step after, um, you know, after mobile blogging, after mobile picture taking. So now that I've got a device that supports that, I just bought a thousand dollar phone. <sighs> it's not a phone, it's a pocket PC. It's a little computer. Um, you know, that's sort of the next logical extension there, and I'd really like to, uh, I'd really like to go th down that realm. And wearable cameras, I don't know how many of you have heard of Steve Mann, but he's like my god, so, of this. And um, <clears throat> he does wearable, he does w w mediated reality, actually, not only wearable cameras, but, um, you know, you are, you're taking a video and then, you know, he's wearing glasses that actually project the video back to him with, um, you know, with additional information. So he can, he can look at somebody, <laughs> he can look at somebody, and um, have the facial recognition put their name below the picture as he looks at them. Things like that. And he's got to the point where it's actually disorienting for him to not wear these glasses because they're so, you know, there's so much information. He does satellite feeds and he does some very, very interesting stuff. And he's actually from Toronto, which is where I'm from. So that's kind of neat. That's something I'd like to maybe, you know, go down there. This is my philosophy for life and my site and everything. And this is my philosophy for communities too. And my friend, I'm not a math person, and, and this, this is for my friend Erica, who is a, very much a math person, and, and she kind of nabbed this from a professor, and I just, you know, I just loved it, and it's become my new philosophy. Integrate everything. Everything in life. Um, and this comes back to my site. I mean, this ties back into why I'm using content management system, why, um, uh, you know, why I like the cams the way I like, why, why things aren't just good enough, you know, the way they are. I'll give you an example. Um, I do use, I use Outlook for my, for my email and, and managing my life. And as much as I hate to use Outlook, it's the one that d does everything. And it's the only thing that I can actually, you know, take emails and drag them to a task list and add comments. And, you know, most people don't use all that, those functions of Outlook. And for me, it's become sort of a necessity. So I love that. But now I, on my site, I used to use Mozilla Calendar um, to update my calendar on my site because it creates ICS files, which are the same as, you know, um, Apple's iCal files, which then have um, a couple people have written some web applications to display them uh, using PHP. So I could create, you know, using, using Mozilla Calendar, I could create calendar files which I could then upload, which could then be displayed. And this was all great, but then when I really needed to be using Outlook, um, you know, it was like, well, I need to be able, I need to be able to use the same functionality. I hate having two programs. Having one, having, having two programs, having a program for my email and a program for my schedule was, just wasn't good enough. That all had to be together in one. So, um, you know, with the help of some, some macro that somebody had already developed and, and my boyfriend and I kindly, uh, kindly uh, helping me out with some of the, some of the coding work on it, we, um, you know, created it so it, I can export your, your normal Outlook calendar files as ICS files and upload them, you know, FTP them right from within, um, right from within Outlook. So that's sort of an example of, of what I take this philosophy as. And it's about all these little things that, that make, you know, life seamless. They make life, you know, a lot easier to go on like that. So community. So this is really cool. And I was so glad when I was asked to speak here because, um, you know, community is what my site is really about. And it's not what I intended my site to be about when I started. But then, it, you know, things started, getting, started taking on a mass of its own. And I started realizing, hey, this is a community. Um, every step is an opportunity to make things better for your visitors and you. And what that is to me is, is and I've been accused of, of thinking too much. And I'd say there's, there's worse things that you could be accused of, but there's probably better ones too. Um, and, you know, everything, everything that I either make, if you're making a change or if you're upgrading something or if you're thinking about upgrading something or you're thinking about changing something when it comes to a community that you're running, um, this, is, this is not just a chance to upgrade and a chance to make things later, latest and greatest and cooler. This is a chance to really make things better and make things easier for you. Make things, you know, I, and I, I look at everything with such a critical eye when I'm, when I'm looking, at, um, looking at the community and looking at the things that run it. 
you know, it's like, what? How could we make this easier for people to do? And I, th I treat I treat lurkers as sort of the holy grail of, of you know of the community because they're they're there. They've come to the site. They're reading the site, but they're not quite crossing that line into interacting. And so I think that's what drives this goal for me to constantly be trying to make things easier and better and more enticing for people to do because it's just like why are they not interacting? Um, and you know, and you can along the way you can make things a lot easier for yourself too. Just like you know, like I was saying with Outlook, I mean that makes my life so much simpler because I'm I'm just dealing with one program instead of two. So everything that you do to your site, everything that you need to you know, you might need to change or, along the road, treat it like a golden opportunity because you you know this is a perfect opportunity to be um, to be making things better. Transparency, and what I mean by that is um, really letting people know what's going on behind the scenes. I run. Um, one of the things I run on the site is uh, a, a Nuke module called uh, Workboard, which I use, and I, I actually have somebody now who helps me out, um, sort of as an assistant webmaster, um, and we use to coordinate all the projects that are going on, because I have, uh, you know, I have like a billion ideas that are constantly on the go, and there's things that need to be fixed, and there's all that, but it's not, it's not something that we keep between ourselves, it's not us emailing back and forth, it's not, you know, some kind of group, um, you know, project manager, it's right on the site. So at any given time, anybody can go and see exactly what I'm working on, exactly what the priorities for everything are, um, you know, how much has to be done, how I'm doing everything. And I think that's really cool because people can actually see how everything's working behind the scenes. So, you know, I'm very open about, you know, how many people come to the site, how many people join the site, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that really gives people, I think, a sense of belonging. I think that's part of what, what, you know, and and I don't know, maybe in my case changes it from being sort of a, a fan community to being a, an interactive community and every, where everybody's really on the on a level playing field so give it time um, to me there's nothing sadder than going to a message board and there's like five posts and one of them is the message board owner saying why is nobody posting and one thing that I was very very careful of and, and some some people and I keep saying girls because you know it's it's this whole again it comes back to this whole cam girl world. Um, you know, it's like you put up a webcam and you write a little thing about you and you expect to be getting, you know, like gifts in the mail and people, you know, be, you can have a chat room and everybody will always be chatting, but it's just not the case. And I was really careful of that because I really always hated that and I, I really wanted to avoid that. Um, that when, um, you know, when I started the site and when I started adding interactive features, I didn't add them until the community was ready for it. So, you know, I had a poll at first and a few things like that. Then we had the message boards. And then, you know, my, it seems to develop enough critical mass that I could, you know, actually have a chat. And I run, a, you know, an IRC chat now with, that generally has people in it. And generally people are actually talking in it, which is you know, something I couldn't have done a couple of years ago. So, you know, not forcing those things on it because I think, you know, if people go to a chat room once and there's nobody in it or nobody talking in it, they don't necessarily go back again because they assume that's the way it always is. But if you wait till you're at that point when it works, I think that usually works a lot better. Same thing with the membership site too. You know, people will start up start up sites and start charging $19.99 a month to do it. And for the record, my site is six dollars. It's you know, it's as little as I can without without basically losing money or feeling, you know, losing money on the credit card processing. Um, and uh, you know, and they started that up, and they expect to they expect that to get popular. And it just doesn't work that way. Uh, branching out to other sites, and that's kind of um, RSS is the thing that's really opened the the uh, the door for that. And I do my my journal is on LiveJournal, and the reason my journal is on LiveJournal instead of you know Blogger instead of just running a custom script on my site is because there's the whole LiveJournal community that that you have around that. But at the same time, I can't stand to have something on another site that's not on my site. So what, what I've got is I've got my journal then syndicated using RSS onto my own site. So you can, you can go to my site and you can see everything out there that, you know, that sort of exists about me, I guess. But at the same time, it's on other communities too. And then another site that I've, I've just been raving about for the last week that I love is 43things.com. And it's, um, it's just a site of, of lists. People go in and, and they, you know, create these lists of things they want to do in life, their goals in life. And it's everything from like, you know, floss every day to, to run a marathon. Like, it's, it's, it's ranges, it's huge. And it, it got really big. And, you know, it's really cool that I, you know, so I put some of my goals up there and some of the things I'm doing. But not only that, again, I can syndicate it back to my site and I can have, you know, and they're tied into the Live Journal API. So every time that I make a post about one of the goals that I'm working on, it posts it to my journal too, and then people over on my site don't ever really even know or you know care if they if they want to about these other sites. But you've got this whole other reach of audience. You know, you've got all the people that get, go there that then you know again see you know can 
it, it flows both ways. So that's what I was saying about that sort of that Venn diagram idea of communities is having that overlap and don't be afraid to, to uh, you know, to move to other sites because the, you know, the traffic and, and the, the, the features go both ways. So user customizable, um, you know, that's everything from, from letting people, you know, view things they want to view things, not, not blocking people from changing font sizes or from, you know, from doing that. Um, I'd like to get into that a little bit more. I'd like to be able, you know, people to be able to choose which, which headlines they're seeing um, or, you know, what, what features they want to have in a certain area, how many posts they want to see on a forum. And, and people, you know, it, it, you got to let go of that control, I think, as, as an author. And I, had, I posted in, in my forums, actually, um, I think it was, it was like, I posted the 10,000th post in one of the forums or something, and then sort of gotten, we got into a conversation. I said something about, you know, by the way, is there anything that anybody would, people would like to change or like to be able to do? And uh, one person said something about changing themes in the forums, and I'm going, what, what, what do you mean changing themes? What's wrong with my theme? I like my theme. What's wrong with my theme? You know, and that's where my head is going. And, but, you know, what, wh why? Why? Why wouldn't you let people do that? You know, if they were, you know, I'm not saying that, you, you know, you have to give them the choice to do anything, but, um, you know, all that does is, is makes people, makes people happier, makes, you know, them enjoying their time more. If they, you know, maybe they have, you know, maybe they don't have the greatest eyesight in the world and they want to be able to change to just black and white or higher contrast. But it's that initial feeling that's hard to overcome sometimes of that. It's mine and I like it the way it is and I don't want anybody changing it. And that can again help you know build your community. Um, personality, well, you know, and when I when I talked to Froggy about what I was going to talk about, it was a little bit, you know, I was having trouble deciding what really was interesting and what was relevant. And I, I, you know, I find people that really like, you know, that like to ask me about the site, and and that's great, and I love it. But you know, again, it's it's got to the point where the site. Somebody said once, I can't remember who it was on my site, said it, the, the, the thing I love about your site staff is that it's around you, but it's not all about you. And I kind of had to think about that one and internalize it for a bit. Um, and I'm kind of skipping ahead here, but you know, again, remembering what, what brought people there in the first place. I got so busy, and this is why I you know, hired somebody to help me out with the site, because I was getting to the point where I was spending so much time on running the site. I was never like posting in my journal or hanging out and chatting with people, because I was too busy running everything. And as fun as that is, it lost, you know, you, I lost all sense of, uh, of what that was, and I'm like, well, if, you know, if I don't exist, then the whole reason that you know people were sort of here in the first place doesn't exist, and then you you know everything blows up or something. I don't know. Um, but what really caught me, and this was the bug that got me at the beginning, was this encouraging people to interact with my life. And I put, um, you know, back again in like 2001 or something, I put up a poll saying, what color should I dye my hair? And I actually let popular vote decide my hair color. And this was the coolest thing ever. I thought I was just like on cloud nine about this. I thought this was the greatest thing. I just let people on the internet decide my hair color. I think it was purple for the record. I can't remember, but. Um, yeah, I know, seriously. I should be auctioning off my hair color. <laughs> um, you know, and that was the bug that got me. That was what really turned this into wanting to share my entire life online. And people often ask me, well, but you have no privacy and you can't, you know, you don't have the freedom to do what, I don't know, but I, to me it's the exact opposite. It gives me all the freedom in the world. And, uh, you know, I'm sh I don't know if you guys know, but I released an album about a year and a half ago, and, uh, which I have here for the low cost of $12. <laughs> and, you know, I, not to say that that wouldn't have ever happened without the site and without the community, but it wouldn't have happened nearly, I think, as well or as soon as it happened. Um, you know, because I'm, I'm blogging through the entire process and I'm getting support from people. And, and I, you know, one very late night near the end of the process, I was doing my own packaging, which never do your own packaging. It was horrific. Um, and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting frustrated and this has got to go to the printers whenever. And... I posted my journal, I'm like, somebody help me, like, please, I don't, I need to, I'm working with this, like, 200 meg Photoshop file, and it, it, what's this registration thing I need to give them, and all that, and so I posted, and within, you know, within hours, I've got, like, three people emailing me who are professional graphic designers, who are, like, send me the file, or, you know, what do you need to know, and help me out, and it's stuff, and it, I mean, that's freedom to me, that's not, you know, that's not closing doors, that's opening doors, so, you know, the idea that, um, 
the idea that I'm losing privacy really it just doesn't doesn't click with me. And, and you know, again, people ask me why why do you have a webcam? Why do you why do you have broadcast your life? You know, 24 hours a day. And it's really it's really more that I don't mind. I just don't care. I don't mind if people see everything I'm doing. Um, and you know, and I don't know what I don't know what if what what about me, you know, created that. I don't know why I'm like that, but I, again, I think it's that, it's that interaction. It's knowing that people are always there. It's knowing that I can, you know, I can go to people. It's knowing that, you know, I do have resources, you know, in the, I guess, in the community. And, and um, that, I, I, you know, again, was sort of the biggest drug, like the biggest hook of them all, to be able to do that. Um, celebrity, and I put that word up there with great hesitation, and I added as many you know quotes and question marks as possible because I you know people call me an internet celebrity and, and it's it's weird because it's one of those things that people who know me think that everybody knows me and it's it's kind of like it's kind of like something like slash dot like not like I'm anywhere near as big as slash dot but you know if I tried to say something about slash dot to like my dad you know they'd be like what? But I'm like, what is slash dot? What do you mean? How do you not know that? And how do you explain that to somebody? But people who do know think that everybody else knows, and that's the way I find it, it is about. Like I, I have, you know, had been kind of been recognized a few times and have things like that, and and they're always this. It's always like, oh, doesn't this happen to you often? And I'm no, it doesn't happen to be often. This is like one, you know, 0.001 percent of the population, you know, probably less than that knows I exist. So. Um, but it has, you know, it has been great, and it's allowed me to do things like this, like be here speaking right now, and coming to Cleveland is, is totally cool, and this would obviously have never happened without the site. And, uh, you know, in releasing the album, and I've been on tech TV a few times, and in the media, and, and going to stuff like that, it's all these cool things that had never happened. And, and this is really my, this has really been my first time speaking somewhere. And, did, I'll stop doing that eventually. Um, you know, this has been my, really my first time um, doing something like this, and it was funny because about a week before Froggy emailed me asking me to speak, I was actually telling somebody, you know, I was kind of thinking about my career path and future and stuff. I'm like, what I really want to do is is be like this, and I want to run my site and do sort of some side work and do all this stuff, and then you know maybe maybe I'll write a book and maybe I'll go around speaking and maybe I'll do all this, and then like days later I get invited to speak at this thing, and it's oh, it was the coolest thing ever. So. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, and it's like watching my sort of my dreams come true, you know, right in front of me. So, it, you know, it is cool. And I know, you know, I, I know that that's the kind of life that I've always felt that I wanted to live. Not, you know, not be like a Britney Spears or something. That's a horrible example. But, you, you know, not be like that. Not that kind of celebrity. But I always wanted to sort of have, I had these dreams of being a cult figure. Like I would always, you know, I'd much rather, you know, be remembered in some sense and all that and, and really make a difference in the world. And, you know, I, I since... Ever since I was a little kid, I've always told my dad that I'm going to own an island one day, and I'm still, you know, I still swear I'm going to make good on that and all these, you know, all these things like this um, <clears throat> that have always been a part of my dreams. And I never quite knew, you know, how they were going to be fulfilled, but, um, you know, this is this has sort of been, a, you know, an interesting way. And I never dreamed that this would be the way that this would happen, but, um, you know, this 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 way of sharing my life has been has been very unexpected and very cool. But that's all I'm going to talk about that. I would love to leave lots of room for questions. So anybody um, ask me anything. And I have, I have pins, as I said, to give away. I've got all these little pins. So any questions about community, anything? Yeah. Uh, what made you decide to It was really, um, it wasn't something that I knew a lot about at the time um, in terms of running the back end. And it was just sort of, well, this one's really big, and it's got a lot of stuff already written for it, and there's this huge community for it. Um, I mean, that was really that was the main deciding factor at the time, um, and it's it's turned out pretty well. Like, I know that there, you know, definitely have some issues about PHP Nuke, and, and my my webmaster, you know, is constantly like muttering, "I hate Nuke, I hate Nuke, I hate Nuke" under his breath. Um, but I, I, <laughs> I mean, he he sent I, we were instant messaging back and forth a little while ago, and he said something about you know I, I was coming up with some other crazy scheme that I wanted to do and he started saying like you know that he was crying and I told somebody else and he's like you know that's a good day when you make your developer cry I'm like I think I do that on a regular basis but it was really just just the the, the mass like just just the amount of stuff that was available the community that was around it um, you know and, and the seamlessness of of logins stuff like that so I can add on new I can add on new stuff without having a new a new database, a new membership basis, stuff, things like that. There's so much available. So I'm sure there's other ones. Like as I said, I, I do like Mambo. I, I, I have a couple of friends who've been working with it a lot lately, and 
they have all you know great things to say about it, but in hindsight, we've done so much work to what we've got already that it'll be it'll be a while before there's a complete overhaul again, and then it'll probably I don't know if it'll be something custom or not, but it'll be something totally new. So, yeah, I'll give you a pin. What have we done with it? Uh, well, just in terms of the layout, I'll I'll skip back. There we go. Um, in terms of the layout, in terms of a lot of stuff that we do, like it's just this is the. Um, this is the, the headlines for news articles right there. Um, you know, the forums are, are PHBB plugged into Nuke. So again, it's syndicated back out. Like, this is not the way a PHP Nuke homepage usually looks. Um, some of the sections I can't click now. Like, if you go into some of, the, some of the ones like the FAQ, the chat, a few things like that do look similar. I mean, they've got sort of a side menu and they've got that. But, you know, and we also, I also run, well, actually three installations, but really two installations of, of Nuke. The membership site is a whole other a whole other installation. Um, so I said something that we're kind of working on right now is, is trying to get that completely integrated into each other because I have people sign up for the membership site that don't have main site accounts and then they're like, why can't I post in the forums? So, um, you know, really trying to, trying to integrate it with have two. Because what happens is when, um, like the CAM portal, for example, is a PHP Nuke module, but it's the same one on both sites, on both Nuke installations, and there's a little bit of trickery that sort of has to go on for it to do that. So. It's a little interesting. But yeah, this is actually a post. Oh, no, was that from my? Oh, it's not. That was from a regular web webcam earlier. I thought that was one of the mobile cams, because this actually has a little, a little picture of that, this sort of my, the logo down there. But when I post from my phone, it's got a little cell phone icon at the bottom. So you can distinguish. Any questions? Yeah. say you're Canadian, but I've never heard you say A or B. <laughs> I'll, say a boot. I'll say a boot, probably. He says I say a boot. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have much of an accent. I'm sort of, you know, I'm from Toronto. I'm from the, the big city. It's not as bad as it is out on either side. But I do catch myself saying A once in a while. Oh, you're suspicious. I really am Canadian. I was actually born in northern Ontario, too, of all things. But I own a Chesterfield. And I eat poutine. And, and what else? And ketchup chips. Ketchup. It's ketchup. It's still ketchup. We have this weird hybrid of, of sort of the British and the, we just we just chose whichever ones we liked from each one. I don't really know the rhyme or reason to it, but the yeah. Taco Bell, what is the side order? A side order? Yeah. What is the, the side order you give them meals to Taco Bell? Fries? Yeah. Oh yeah, they don't have they don't have fries at Taco or they didn't have fries at Taco Bell, did they? No. They don't. Yeah. They don't at all. At all, you don't have fries. Fries Supreme. You guys don't have fries Supreme? Oh man, you guys are missing out. That's a good thing. You don't have Tim Hortons, I know. They, they're getting it's creeping down. It's creeping down. They've got it in New York, but pardon? Is it in Michigan? Yeah. That's yeah. New York does have it. I've seen it in New York, but it's actually owned by Wendy's now. It's kind of depressing. They they all these American companies buy up all the. Hmm. I totally don't know who was talking, and it's really freaky. Oh, okay, there. It's, sorry, I can, it's an Ohio company. Oh, okay. I can't be doing. I won't. I won't. The beer store, yeah, the beer store. I don't, I'm not much of a beer fan, which is probably going to get booed off the stage here. But uh, Yeah, the beer store. We've got our quirks. It's kind of great. And I, I get a lot. It's amazing to talk to so many people from so many different places. But um, and as you can imagine, I've met people from everywhere. And it's great when I go somewhere. Like when I came down, you know, came to Cleveland, I'm posting about going to Cleveland. And I get a couple of emails about, you know, people in Cleveland. It's really cool that you're coming here. And um, it, it's nice to have that feeling. I feel like anywhere I go, I know somebody. And, you know, it is cool to have a, a, like an actual conference like this where there's actually, you know, you can actually kind of see and talk to people, which you kind of lose sense of over a while, after a while. But, any other questions? Yeah? How much do you miss this part? How do you, how do you survive? How do I survive? Yeah. How do I make any money? Well, I'm a student. I'm a student full time. First of all, I mean, this isn't this isn't my full time job. Um, no, they don't. But I work. I work. I'm a co op student, um, and I and I work. But um, the site isn't a big income. It's a bit. It's a bit of income from the. Uh, I, I don't know if you were here. The, the membership site. I do run a membership site too. So I mean, there's that, which isn't. I mean, I, I pay something. I, in expenses for the site, I pay about 500 bucks a month. So it, it, you know, it's it's not it's not cheap to run it, but you know, I make enough that at least it makes it sort of makes my time a little bit worthwhile, and it's enough that I can go out and you know buy a sort of a, a phone for the purpose of the site or a better digital camera and all that stuff like that. But you know, I'm, I'm a student. I've got another year to go, and you know, I don't really know where things are going to go after that. I don't I don't foresee stopping the site, and you know, 
for as long as I can I can imagine. But I never intend it to be a, a you know a career replacement. You know, it'd be something um, as part of my life. So, yeah. Other question? Yeah. <laughs> um, I make as much of my personal information as available as possible. And I'm not joking when I say that. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Um, one thing that I did from from the very beginning was I never I never hid any of my you know my real name, where I lived, anything like that. And I honestly attribute that to my extreme lack of stalkers. I, I just, I've never, I've never been, I don't know, I've never been an interesting target. Once in a while, I would get phone calls, I mean, you know, especially in the early days, I would get phone calls saying, you know, just saying, ha, ah, I found out your phone number. And I'm like, yeah, good for you. You can who is. You rock. Like, you know, these people, like, there was no quest. There was no, you know, amusement out of it. I, I, I honestly think that's a huge part of it. You know, my name, like, I, you know, in terms of my CD, it's my full name, my profession, you know, professionally speaking, I've always used my full name. Um, and you know, I'm fully disclosed where I go to school, what I do, where I'm going, all that kind of stuff like that. As I said, I might draw that line at the GPS tracker thing, but um, I really think it's been it's been the openness that's that's prevented that from happening. But, you know, I've had I've had a few very I don't quite call them stalkers, more in the line of very dedicated fans. Um, <laughs> you know, that never nothing really ever creepy came above it. It was more amusing and and just you got to kind of back away and deal with these people. But you know, nothing ever nothing really ever harassing or, or creepy like that. The phone, I always hated people calling me. But anyway, yeah. Well, this is a very very personal question. If you have to do it, I apologize because I've been called Frank Bernstein. Get back to work. <laughs> And for a lot of people, that's not the norm. And yeah. they're not used to that. They're not used to that level of openness in a relationship. What you know? What things do you do, or what what is your mindset, or how do you communicate with your partners or your partner, your primary partner, to to make sure that that's okay, and that you know everybody understands what's going on, and that there's no hurt feelings or jealousy or anything like that. So it's a very personal yeah, no, it is. It is. But I, I mean, again, it's not really something I mind talking about. Um, it's it's a really tricky balance, and it's been you know it's taken us a lot of years. And I've been in a relationship with, with Steve, that guy sitting over there, um, for <laughs> for about seven years. And um, you know I would I would almost say that it's taken us most of that time to get it right, and to figure out exactly what works for us. And we do have a you know a fairly open relationship, and um, you know he's a little camera shy, so so there's that too. Um, but I've always been, I've just always been open about what I'm interested in. And I have some essays and, you know, some sort of opinion pieces and things like that. And I'm very open. And people will email me stuff. I've had, I've had people, though, you know, email me things saying, uh, you know, my girlfriend, I, I'm kind of interested, or I'm, I'm interested in bondage, but I don't know about my girlfriend. Um, you know, how do I, how do I help? How do I talk to her about it or whatever? And, you know, I'll write them back and I'll, help, I'll, I'll talk to them about it. And, and then I'll, you know, I'll, a good percentage of the time I'll get an email, you know, again, a month from now saying, you know what, we're, we're kind of trying this out and it's working and, you know, I'd just like to, you know, thank you for your input. Same thing with the community, too. Um, you know, it's, it's a topic that's come up more than a few times on the forums. Um, and I always try to, you know, provide my input where I can, but it's just not something I mind talking about. And I think that, you know, um, shows itself in our relationship, too, because we do, we talk to each other and, you know, figure out what the boundaries are, and there are boundaries, you know, I, people think I'm some kind of wild, crazy, hedonistic, you know, you know, to a certain degree, but, you know, um, you know, there's a line, and, and, you know, I know we know where that is, and we've talked about it over the years, but it's taken a long time to get it right. People, like, you know, saying we're th thinking about having an open relationship, or threesomes, or this, and, you know, how do we do it right? <laughs> this is not a conversation. This is not something that I can just tell you. You know, this is not. There's no magic answer to it. But it's all about communication, and you know. And I'm glad that I can provide a bit of an open forum. And, and we're such an open community. There, you know, the only thing that we don't tolerate is lack of openness, really. And uh, you know, people have had more than, on more than one occasion. People have said this is the place that they they come to to get away from sort of stupidity and and closed-mindedness and all that. Um, but again, it you know runs a huge range of people from from lawyers down to you know whatever. Like you know, a huge range of people. And and if you you know if you're not an ass or not a complete idiot, you know I'm willing to talk about pretty much anything. And that's the way I think most people feel in the community. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, expanded my community the most. The forums have really taken off. Like it used to be to the point where I, you know, you, there'd be a few new forum posts a day, and now it's like a few new forum posts an hour. Like I can check the forums at any time, and there's something new, which is really cool because it's it's gained this mass that doesn't even have anything to do with me. It's kind of like Froggy was saying about the conference. You know, it's not about me anymore. It's really not. Um, and you know that the forums have 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 been a huge expansion. In terms of the most traffic, well, everybody likes photos, and you know, there's the photo gallery and the cam portal and all that. A lot of it, a lot of the traffic comes from the music too. Um, you know, I, I'm, f you know, fairly sort of well linked and well connected with the music, so um, a lot of it is, uh, a lot of it's the music too. But the cam is really, really the hugest part. Like if you actually look at my traffic, like 90% of my traffic is just, just the cam itself. It's refreshing and um, it's on portals everywhere. Not all the portals catch it locally. A lot of them just serve it up, you know, off my link too. So. That's still the huge, the huge percentage of my of my traffic. So, yeah. Any other questions? What is your music like? Oh, you get one and see. Actually, I have I have all the songs available for download on my site too. It's it's under an open music license. So um, while I do sell copies of it, um, it's available freely on my site. But it's um, the best way I've ever come up to describe with it is sort of alternative folk. It's sort of, it's sort of piano. I play the piano as my main instrument, so it's a lot of it's piano based. Um, some songs are a little bit more orchestral, a little bit more, a little more, more dark and rocky. I sort of get a lot of Tori Amos, Fiona Apple, kind of comparisons going on. If that helps you, but yeah, it's been fun. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, sharing your life on the internet is obviously a very bold decision, and you have a very respectful amount of users. But, uh, do you find yourself like spending a lot of time marketing your site? Spreading my word out. It pretty much feeds itself. I mean, I've had some. I've had some really um, good breaks, like being on Tech TV a few times. I did this little game show thing they did. That was a, that was a huge sort of um, sort of increase. But it's really been a pretty gradual thing over the years. Um, I don't, as far as marketing, I've never, other than actually a few classified ads on FARC, um, I've never put a you know put an ad anywhere. Um, you know, but it's really, it's, it's the cam portals that get the audience. And um, again, it's that branching out to other communities. So I'm on other music sites and then that might bring some people in and I'm on portals and that brings people in and, and, and all that stuff like that. But it's been a, it's been a really gradual, it's been a really gradual inc increase over time. And, you know, being open about it, and I, I've been naked in my school paper. Um, you know, I sort of, it's sort of, you know, got a little bit of local uh, interest too, so. You know, I don't know. Yes, I was on. I was on the cover for I think it was two years ago, of the eye opener. Who is Fark is also linked to several times. I remember that. That was one with the, the students at my when they all were topless and they set them as the desktop wallpapers in the labs. That was funny. That was funny. That guy must hate you. Pardon? Yeah. I still remember that. And then the girl who was running this year for for president and, yeah. and she had the cleavage yeah. shot. They, she's actually quite pretty, but yeah, yeah wasn't the best picture, but um, now I'm forgetting the question was. <laughs> so we got talking about the boobs and marketing myself, yeah, yeah, something like that. But uh, yeah, I know I don't put any, I don't put ads out places, but you know, the, 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 oh yeah, the school newspaper one was, they needed somebody for a photo. They had this idea to do a, to do this like naked robot sex thing. So they made this robot and they just needed somebody with it, but not many people can say that they've been naked in their university paper. So I always like that one. And, and I'm like this around a robot. <laughs> so it was kind of fun. <laughs> Any other questions? So was your boyfriend jealous? Of the robot? Yeah. I don't know. Were you jealous of the robot? The master, I, killed <laughs> <laughs> I guess the open relationship doesn't, doesn't extend itself to robots. <laughs> uh, it was, it, <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Anything else? <coughs> no? Thanks for letting me speak. It's been a really cool trip down here, and everybody made it possible. Thank you.